Hey y'all, it's Courtney, aka Court.is.Claire. Follow me on IG. And this is my channel, Court.is.Claire. Where I represent the lifestyle of Claire. And what is the lifestyle of Claire, you're probably wondering? It is a multi-layer woman. The woman that's somewhere between Claire Huxtable from the Cosby's and Cardi B, your wretched best friend. This channel covers travel, fashion and beauty, finances, nursing, and lifestyle. So this video in particular is about preceptorship. So if you are interested, stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, so a preceptorship. You may know it as an orientation, a residency, or an internship, but in nursing we call it a preceptorship. And basically it's where you're paired with somebody who has more knowledge, um, more experience to help you adjust to your new role in nursing or your new specialty. And this is so important because once you're coming straight out of school, you might not have the foundation or the skills or the know-how to really adjust into the real world. The clinicals are one thing, but the real world is totally different. And this preceptor bridges the gap. If you don't have a good preceptor, it could be detrimental to your nursing career. Think of it as, as you grow as a kid, excuse me, your mom teaches you how to wash, she teaches you how to um, make your bed, brush your teeth, all those different things. They give you good foundations. And normally what you see as a child is what you portray as an adult. Well, the same thing goes for nursing. If you are learning these things, um, learning good fundamentals from a good preceptor, it can lead you to being a great nurse. With that being said, I'm here with my first ever preceptor, Miss Martha. Hey, Miss Martha. Hello, Welcome. everyone. Thank Welcome you. Welcome, Miss Martha, to the pink couch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me. This is truly an honor. Thank you. And when you first reached out to me, I was like, oh, no, no, no. I don't think I can do it. But truly, I would be remiss if I didn't do it. Well, I'm happy to have you here. And first, I want you to start off by telling them, about you, like your nursing history, how long you've been a nurse, and your road to where you are now. Okay, first of all, um, I have been in the nursing profession for, I would say maybe like 20, 25 years. I started out as an LPN, and during that time as an LPN, I had others, um, individuals that motivated me to go on to become an RN. And I did RN for like about 15 years and then I went on, you know, to attain my bachelor's degree with the help of other nurses that are out there in the field as well. So nursing to me has always been a passion, mm. you know, so that's something that I've always been passionate about. Um, just being able to give what I know to others is important to me. Well, I feel like you are the best nurse that I've ever dealt with, I've ever worked with. I feel like this is... It's just like you are epitome of what a nurse is because you are empathetic, you're knowledgeable, you have common sense and book sense, and you also are relatable to the patients. You don't, you always seem to, to me like you're an extension of their family and you go behind the scenes, you go through great lengths to make sure what is right for the patient is done and you can't ask for any more when it comes to a nurse. Period. Thank you. Point blank. Thank you. So you are the best nurse that I know and everything I've learned from you I can't, I could not put a price tag on that. Wow. Period. Point blank. Thank you. <laughs> but let's talk about, so we all oh know God. that nursing has, nursing has this saying, <laughs> nurses eat their young. And I'm going to say I've been on both sides of the fence. I will say that, um, and sometimes when I've sp switched up my specialties, I haven't had the best preceptor, but you know, it goes, but it just it really depends on the person. That's what it really boils down to for me because I've had nice people and I've had mean people. It's just the way it goes. However, when I first met Miss Martha, <sighs> first impressions, thank God, are not always lasting impressions. What do you, how did you, how do you feel like our first, in, first impression of each other went? Well, the first impression, it didn't start off very great, I must say. Um, you know, she walked up on the unit and she was, you know, like any other new nurse or any um, individual that's starting a new position. They're all, you know, happy and, you know, excited about the unknown. But unfortunately, 
our first impression was not very well. Child, she trying to be real, <laughs> real scripted. She tried to be real, real cute. But thank God it didn't last though. It didn't last, but I'm gonna keep it one hundred <laughs> with y'all. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna give y'all the true tea. First of all, I'm like all bubbly because I got a job in the recession, honey, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna learn so many things, blah 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 blah. I'm like ready. I walk up, my manager's like, okay, I'm gonna pair you with Martha. I hear great things about Martha from other the other nurses passing by, like, who's your preceptor? I'm like, Martha. It's like, oh girl, you good. <laughs> Martha, she introduces me to Miss Martha. <laughs> She's like, hi, this is your new preceptee, Courtney. And she was like, hmm. And walked away, kept on putting up her bag. And I was like, who is this Evelina? Trust me. They <laughs> Trust me, it wasn't meant to be that way. You know something, Courtney? Um, I still laugh about that whenever you bring it up. Because truly, um, that first impression wasn't meant as a way of saying that I didn't want to take the time out to mm -hmm. put into you. It's just that. The way management was being ran, it's like, you know, you get finished with one thing, the next thing you know, without even being told, you've been introduced to someone that you're going to be precepting. So, believe me, it wasn't meant that way. That's what she said, Jill. It wasn't. <laughs> Anywho, it wasn't a determining factor. Actually, she, you know, she, I could, after having the same manager, I understood why she was feeling the way she was feeling and. It, it was all good. We we bonded after that. But that first impression, I was like, girl, I must be finna go back to medical assistant. What am I going to do? Because I can handle this. Um, So I talked to Miss Martha beforehand. And I wanted to prep her for the video. And I asked her, as a preceptor, Miss Martha, how many people have you precepted? Gosh, I would say maybe 50. But Probably then, more than 50. But you know something, be truthful, after time, you just don't keep up with the numbers. Mm. Mm. You just don't. You just go with it. You just go with it. Well, I'm sure if a lot of y'all watching this may have been perceptive by Miss Martha, so y'all go ahead and shout her down in the comments <laughs> and tell her how much she impacted your nursing career because I know a lot of y'all are watching were perceptive by Miss Martha. Um, I asked her as a preceptor and having precepted so many people into this profession some go-to things that new nurses should know or new people changing new nurses changing the different specialties what do you think that they should know well first of all I think that it's important you know to ask for help mm -hmm. you know being able to speak up when you're unsure about something if you don't know you know if you don't know it mm -hmm. because it could be the difference between life or death and most importantly, it can prevent portable mistakes mm -hmm. because that's very important. Because remember, you're, you have this person's life in your hand and it's important to be able to speak up. Secondly, um, I think that it's most important, you know, to know how to do a head-to-toe assessment. Mm -hmm. Not the type of assessment where you're charting what the next nurse said or maybe what was given, in, given to your report. So it's important to know how to do those things because having those skills, you'll be able to pick up on the abnormalities that might be occurring in, in that patient before, Truthy. you know, those same before the patient goes downhill. True. So those things are very important. And lastly, um, being able during your time of preceptorship, being able to take advantage of every opportunity. I mean, every little opportunity. There's something going on that you're not familiar with. Try to get into it and try to find out what this is about. And always remember that during a time that when you're with the precept, there's a time where you're learning. It's okay not to know. That's Even right. though when you get on your own, you're still going to have those opportunities, you know, for someone in the unit to help you. But just get in and be able to communicate effectively as well with the doctors. So when you have your skills in check, not saying that you're going to be 100%, That's right. but having that foundation, it builds upon being a great nurse. I totally agree with everything you said. I mean, you have so many nurses and young nurses coming into the profession and they, they want to chart what the pe person behind them, or excuse me, prior to them charting. And that is dangerous. No, no, no. That's something that could cost you your license. That is something that could cost you your job. And I mean, and it, it's something that's so, so preventable because all you have to do is just really go in there. And to be honest with you, that's the time you build a rapport with your patient. Because you get to say, hey, I need to sit down. Well, how are you feeling today? Oh, my this and that. Okay, let me look. Let me take a look and see what's going on. You have to, it gives you the time to connect. And also, you're doing your job effectively. If you don't know your lab values, 
if you don't have a quick quick reference how can you know when there is a change in status with your patient how can you have an educated conversation with a physician or with your charge nurse or with a provider or with a family if you can't even read your own lab values exactly so exactly. that's 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 true see very important that's yeah. very important um so let me tell y'all a story oh. <laughs> so let's talk about my first day with miss martha honey she after the little introduction she was like okay well i'm finna go to lunch i'm like uh, we finna get an admission and they said the admission is a hospice patient and Miss Martha was like don't worry about it like we'll pro if you pass away we'll provide postmortem care that's what we're supposed to do but y'all I didn't know what that was postmortem care is like how you prepare the patient's body after passing but I didn't know any of that I'm telling you I was fresh wet behind the ears out of nursing school okay no nothing but what she's saying to me right now in my clinicals and girl, she was like, I'll be back before the patient gets here. So as soon as she go to lunch, the man come, the um, EMS come rolling in there with the patient. Just push it, push it, push it. And he was like, looks at me and tells me, he got 10 more minutes to live. You better do what you got to do. And I'm like, what? What is he even talking about? So I go in there, I'm like, I don't know, I know what to do. I don't even know how to receive an admission. But I'm going to just poke this little thing to the um, oxygen, put his oxygen on. That's the least I can do because you got your ABCs. Okay, we do that. We get them set up. I go out. I go get Miss Martha. I come back in with Miss Martha. <laughs> and as I, soon as we walk inside this patient's room, he takes his last breath. And I'm like, ah, what is going on here? This is my first day. I don't know anything about this. And she was just looking at me like, what's the big deal? Like, come on. We, we, when we used to work, it's called, it's called, I ain't gonna say where it's called, but it's called the jungle where we used to work. And she was like, girl, you got a lot more stuff coming. You need to come on and let's get what we got to get done and make sure he has the proper care and we move on. And I'm just sitting there like, but let me tell you, after that experience, number one, her and I bonded after that. And it has set me up to, to just roll with the punches, trial by fire. And I, it's been youthful yes. throughout my career. The one thing that I can say I take daily, even now from Miss Martha, is what she taught me is always know your policy and procedures. If you don't know them, go look them up. <laughs> if you cannot find them on your intranet or whatever your hospital uses or on a book on your unit, you better refer to the um, standards of practice. You better refer to the certifying body of that specialty. Don't do anything you do not have a policy for. And if I can tell y'all anything, that thing has saved me many a days. It has, you don't even know how it has saved wow. me. I have used that tool to go to the CNO. Like, it is not here. I cannot do it and they can't say anything because it's if that's their policy that's your leg to stand on so I take that with my practice that's one of the things I do daily from you using thank you but you know something can I go back to the scene with the patient mm. I'm expiring yes but look at it this way the way that it was set up you didn't know what you needed to do but guess what the patient didn't know that you didn't know what to do true so that situation made you more independent because sadly to say is that when new nurses start out we have a tendency of thinking that we have to cling mm -hmm. onto that patient that's not the way not excuse me not to that patient you think that you have to cling to your preceptor that's not the way that it should be you got to have a little independency so that you can be strong in order mm -hmm. to face the other stuff that we talked about before because there's going to be many things where you're going to have to think, mm -hmm. yes, your precept is there, but then again, you've gone through the rough part of it already. You finished the, the nursing, you've taken the board already. So now you're out there, you have it. It's just that you got to build that confidence up. So your precept is there to help you with being confident. So that experience, um, to me, it took you a long way because I look it at is. you now, um, I think of a parable or a phrase in the Bible where it talks about the seeds, you know, where the seeds, they fall on stormy crowns, they fall by the wayside. You have the seed, when, it's, when it falls, it sticks its roots in the ground and it starts to grow. Mm -hmm. So you're that seed because you've been through a lot, you know, so you have grown. <laughs> you've blossomed, so 
Thank you, Miss Parker. Not every experience is meant to be thank you, a thank bad you, experience. Thank you. But you have really grown. Well, you are a good seed. Thank and I'm you. I'm glad that I was able to be a part of that. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, so that is our preceptorship. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, drop them down. Don't forget to subscribe, and most importantly. You know I love you, but God, he loves you so much more. God bless you. Bye.